Hi, this is Sunil and welcome back to the what is the output video series on C programming language. Now just like the previous tutorials, you guys can pause this movie and take a look at the source code which is here in the editor and try to guess the output of the program. Once you guys have an answer, just play the movie, I'm gonna run the program and explain the output. Alright, now I guess you guys have an answer for this program, I'm gonna build and run this. So it's gonna be build, build and run and the output of this program is x equal to 12. Now let's see why we're gonna get the output x equal to 12. So now if you look at the source code in this program, first we have a variable called x and we have initialized this variable x with a value of 0 and then we have this for loop and in this for loop we don't have any statements in the initialization part and then we have the condition part and then we have the updation part and in this for loop body we have only one statement and that is x equal to x multiplied by x so after this for loop we have a printf statement and we are printing out the value of this variable x so now here before explaining you know why we got the output 12 i just want to show you guys how a for loop is gonna work so the syntax of the for loop is, you know, we're going to have the keyword for and then between the parentheses, first we have the initialization part and then the condition part and then the updation part. And then between the curly braces, we can have the statements which we want to execute as this for loop body. So now here what happens is for the first iteration or you know for the first time this for loop is going to be executed this initialization part will be executed. So this initialization part will be executed only once and it will be for the first iteration. So after executing this initialization part this condition part will be executed. Here if this condition part is going to evaluate to true then the statements inside this for loop or you know this for loop body will be executed. If this condition is going to evaluate to false then the statements inside this for loop will not be executed and we're going to come out of this for loop and we're going to execute other statements which are after the for loop. So now if this condition is going to evaluate to true then the statements which you're going to have inside this for loop or you know this for loop body will be executed and after executing all these statements which are inside this for loop body the updation part will be executed. So if this condition is going to evaluate to false in the first iteration only then this updation part will not be executed. If this condition part is going to evaluate to true then the for loop body will be executed and after that this updation part will be executed. So after executing this updation part again the condition part will be executed. So here if this condition part is going to evaluate to true again then the statements inside this for loop or you know this for loop body will be executed again. If this condition is going to evaluate to false then we are going to come out of this for loop and execute the other statements. So if this condition is going to evaluate to true again then the for loop body will be executed and again after executing all the statements inside this for loop body the updation part will be executed. So after executing the updation part again the condition part will be executed and this cycle is gonna continue. When this condition part is gonna evaluate to false you know the for loop will be terminated and we're gonna come out of this for loop and execute the other statements. So here the things to remember is this initialization part is executed only once in the beginning and then if this condition part is evaluated to false in the very first iteration or in the beginning only then this updation part will not be executed. Alright now we know how our for loop is gonna work we're gonna see why we got the output as 12 here in this program. So now here in this program what happens is you know first this x variable will be initialized with a value of 0 and then this for loop will be executed. So first you know this initialization part will be executed and we don't have any statements here and that's why nothing will be executed. So after this initialization part this condition part will be executed. So here x is containing a value of 0 and here in this condition part we have x 
less than 10 condition so here 0 less than 10 is gonna evaluate to true because 0 is less than 10 and that's why since this condition part is gonna evaluate to true we can execute these statements which are inside this for loop or in other words we can execute this for loop body so we can execute x equal to x multiplied by x so now here x is containing a value of 0 this statement will be exactly equal to x equal to 0 multiplied by 0 so this 0 multiplied by 0 is gonna return 0 and that 0 will be stored in this x variable again so now x variable is gonna contain a value of 0 so now here in this for loop body we have only one statement so after executing this statement the updation part will be executed so this x plus equal to 3 will be executed so this x plus equal to 3 means x equal to x plus 3 so x is containing a value of 0 so x equal to x plus 3 will make x equal to 0 plus 3 so this 3 will be stored in this variable x so after this updation part this x variable is gonna contain a value of 3 so now after this updation part again the condition part will be executed so now here we have x less than 10 and x is containing the value of 3 so 3 is less than 10 which is true and that's why this for loop body will be executed once again and we have x equal to x multiplied by x so x is containing 3 so it will be equal to 3 multiplied by 3 and here this 3 multiplied by 3 is gonna result in 9 so that 9 will be stored in this variable x so here after this statement you know for the second iteration this x variable is gonna contain the value of 9 so now after executing you know this for loop body the updation part will be executed again so now x is already containing the value of 9 so we have x plus equal to 3 which exactly means x equal to x plus 3 so x is containing the value of 9 so it's gonna be 9 plus 3 so the value is gonna be 12 and that 12 will be stored in this variable x so after this updation part again the condition part will be executed so here we have x less than 10 now x is containing 12 and we have the condition whether x is less than 10 which is gonna result false because 12 is not less than 10 and that's why this condition is gonna result in false and the for loop body will not be executed or you know this for loop is gonna stop executing so we're gonna come out of this for loop and execute the other statements so we have this printf statement here and we are printing out the value of this x variable so x is containing the value of 12 here so it's gonna display x equal to 12 so that's why when we're gonna run the program we're gonna get x equal to 12 as the output so this is it guys this is how this program is gonna run thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you guys have any doubt or if you guys have any suggestion just write your opinion in the comment box or you know you guys can send a message at facebook.com slash learning and also you can uh, tweet us at learning edu so once again thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next tutorial